Welcome back to Anatomy on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. All right, here's really the more neutral appearance of the lumbar spine, the pelvis, and then here's, of course, the sacrum. Let's suppose we were to rotate the sacrum. We'd also have to get some rotation of the lumbar spine, but the point is, if we take the superior surface of the sacrum and rotate it anteriorly, okay? That also means take the inferior surface of the sacrum and rotate it posteriorly. So imagine taking the sacrum and rotating it like these arrows show. That movement is nutation, and you'd get something like this. So right here, this is in the nutated state. Okay? Notice that, in addition to movements of the lumbar spine, the superior part of the sacrum has been rotated forward or anteriorly, and the inferior part of the sacrum and coccyx have been rotated posteriorly. We're now in the nutated state, and so from going to this position up here, down here, that is nutation. Okay? Now it turns out that restriction of nutation is very important for stability of the SI joint, and the major structure that restricts nutation, or sacral nutation, is the sacrotuberous ligament. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, the sacrospinous ligament also assists with that. Uh, but again, the sacrotuberous ligament is the major structure that restricts sacral nutation. So we don't get anywhere near this degree of nutation. This is not a normal movement. If we obliterated the sacrotuberous ligament, we might get this, okay? But again, this movement is restricted via the sacrotuberous ligament. We can also further restrict that nutation range of motion, also by the action of biceps femoris, and that's because it originates on the ischial tuberosity. Uh, so the biceps femoris, remember that's one of the hamstring muscles, the lateral one, that can also restrict nutation. Okay? Additionally, there is a little bit of sacral nutation, maybe about two degrees that occurs, but the amplitude of that sacral nutation, even within that range, can be controlled and modulated by coactivation of some of the pelvic floor muscles and the sacral multifidus. But the point is, generally what you would need to know here is what nutation is, and also that it's restricted mainly by the sacrotuberous ligament. Okay. Now for the opposite movement, counter nutation. So here we're in a nutated state down here, we need to get back to the neutral state, that movement is counter nutation, so it's the opposite. So we have initially our coccyx and inferior sacrum, they're already rotated out posteriorly, so they need to rotate in the opposite direction, they need to rotate back anteriorly, you can see they've done that up here, and then the superior part of the sacrum would need to be rotated back posteriorly. You can see that's happened here. And so when you go from the nutated state back to the neutral state, that is counter nutation. Okay? And in general, we can say that it's posterior tilt of the superior sacrum. So it tilts back posteriorly, gets back to its original position, but also the coccyx rotates anteriorly along with the inferior sacrum. Now in terms of sacral counter nutation, uh, it's restricted mainly by the long dorsal sacroiliac ligament. Remember, this was one of the two ligaments that was part of the posterior sacroiliac ligament. Right here, this is the long dorsal sacroiliac ligament. Okay? That ligament actually restrains counternutation, and that ligament's actually shown right here. Remember that it actually connects the most posterior part of the iliac crest, really with the sacrum, and then also partially blends with this ligament right here, which is the sacrotuberous ligament. Okay? Remember that the sacrotuberous ligament, which is right here, restricts sacral nutation. Long dorsal sacroiliac ligament restrains sacral counternutation. And we can also get further restriction of counter nutation range of motion by coactivation of latissimus dorsi, actually, through its attachment at the thoracolumbar fascia. But the major things to know here would be what counter nutation is, and also the major ligament that restricts that range of motion, that is long dorsal sacroiliac ligament. And the main takeaways from this video are really just to understand what creates this massive stability of the SI joint, and really understanding that its mobility is extremely low. Mobility is about two degrees. You won't even be able to detect two degrees. Go on a goniometer and measure out two degrees. 
If you tried that motion, you may not even be able to detect that at all. Um, this is certainly a lot less than what we would expect, even for something like E version of the ankle, which already has a low range of motion, but certainly negligible compared to motion of the shoulder joint or the knee joint or the hip joint. You shouldn't even be able to detect this. Okay, So very, 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 very stable very, 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 very immobile. And you don't want this mobility because if it had mobility, you might get dislocations here. And along the same lines of, of these two slides, if you did have a disruption of the sacrotuberous ligament or the long dorsal sacroiliac ligament, you might actually uh, allow some extra mobility there. And that, in, that extra mobility can impair load transfer through the SI joint, creating SI joint dysfunction. Hopefully this video made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.